Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We're so glad that you have taken the next step in the Broadcom Master's process by opening your application. I'm Reva Ramadurai, Program Manager for the Broadcom Masters, and I'm here with my colleague, Erin Cummins. Hello. We are responsible for the Broadcom Masters program, and you will receive many emails from us throughout the application process. Today, we're going to give you an overview of the Broadcom Masters program, and then we will take some questions. This session is being recorded so that other students who cannot join us today can also hear this information. We want to show you that the application is not a scary process and can even be fun. We are always here to answer your questions. Email us at masters at societyforscience.org at any time. Also, there is no such thing as a dumb question. The judges do not see your questions, just me and Aaron, so don't worry about impressing us. We won't be discussing prizes or the finals week competition today, but I encourage you to check out our frequently asked questions page online, watch a highlights video from 2019 on YouTube, and ask a parent to follow us on Facebook to learn more about it. If you have questions today, feel free to type them in the live chat box on the right-hand side of the screen. Aaron and I will answer a few questions at the very end of the webinar. So let's get started. Broadcom Masters is a program of the Society for Science and the Public, which is the organization that Reva and I work for. The Society for Science and the Public is a nonprofit dedicated to public engagement in the scientific community. The Society's vision is to promote the understanding and appreciation of science and the vital role it plays in human advancement, to inform, educate, and inspire. The Society does this in two main ways, through our publications and through our science competitions. Science News is the award-winning flagship magazine of the Society. It gives readers a concise, concise best-in-class overview of the most important science news from all fields and applications of science and technology. Science News for Students is the Society's award-winning free online publication dedicated to students, parents, and teachers used by nearly 4 million visitors annually. Science News for Students is designed to be accessible and interesting to student scientists, connecting the latest in scientific research to in and out of classroom learning. The Society for Science in the Public also runs three distinguished science competitions. The first is the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair, which is the world's largest international pre-college science competition and is open to high school students. The Regeneron Science Talent Search is the nation's oldest and most prestigious science and math competition for high school seniors. Finally, we have the Broadcom Masters competition, which is the one that you are now applying for. The Broadcom Foundation uh, supports the Broadcom Masters and is made possible through the Broadcom Foundation. The Broadcom Foundation empowers young people to be STEM literate, critical thinkers, and college and career ready by creating multiple pathways and equitable access to achieve the 21st century skills they need to succeed as engineers, scientists, and innovators of the future. Now let's talk about the competition. The Broadcom Math, Applied Science, Technology, and Engineering for Rising Stars, or MASTERS, is the premier national science fair-based competition for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. Under normal circumstances, in order to qualify to enter Broadcom Masters, a student must first place within the top 10% in a society-affiliated science fair. However, as you probably have heard, this year we have opened the application to any middle school student that was registered to participate at an affiliated fair this year. We know many students have faced unique circumstances this spring, and so we felt that any student who, had, who would have competed at their local fair deserved a chance to apply. This is an incredible opportunity, and so we definitely encourage you to make the most of it. If you haven't already opened an application, hopefully you will do so after this webinar. Ultimately, 30 Broadcom Masters finalists have the opportunity to spend a week in the fall in Washington, DC, 
showcasing their research projects and competing as teams in hands-on STEM activities. So the first thing that you need to be do, you need to do in order to be considered for the Broadcom Masters is to do a science or engineering project. You then must enter your project into a society affiliated science and engineering fair. This year, just by entering your project, you're now eligible to apply. The next big step is to complete and submit the online application, which is due on June 10th, 2020 at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. By watching this video, we're assuming that you've already opened an application, but if you haven't, you can do so by going to broadcommasters.fluidreview.com. And we'll put that link in the description of the video after this. Once you have applied, you are in the running to become one of the top 300 masters. From those 300, the judges then select 30 finalists to come to Washington, D.C. to compete in October. All right, that was a lot. So let's go ahead and break everything down, starting with what it means to be a nominee. Becoming a Broadcom Masters nominee is an honor in and of itself. For 2020, being a nominee means that you have completed a science fair project from start to finish, which is quite an achievement. Whether or not you were able to participate in your society affiliated science fair this year, you have demonstrated the hard work and dedication you need to succeed. So you should be extremely proud. When you were nominated by your fair, you should have also received a packet full of information about the program and how to apply. You could have received a physical packet either in person or after your fair, or you might have received a digital packet from your fair. Both the physical and digital packets have the exact same information. Now let's talk about how one goes from being a nominee to an entrant. So in order to be considered for the competition, a nominee must choose to continue by completing our online application, which is due on June 10th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. The application asks about your project and your interests, as well as your critical thinking skills. The application might seem overwhelming at first, but we've created resources to help you through the process. We have videos that walk you through each section of the application, and you can always email us at masters at societyforscience.org with any questions you might have. This year, the first 5,000 entrants will receive a free t-shirt and all entrants are automatically entered to win prizes like raspberry pies. Our top 300 masters are selected by judges and announced on September 2nd. Both the top 300 and their teachers win awards. Teachers receive a one-year subscription to Science News Magazine. The top 300 masters win a special prize package, including a subscription to Science News, a one-year subscription to Mathematica Plus software, and an invention journal, courtesy of our partners at the Lemelson Foundation, and much more. Now let's talk about being a finalist. From the top 300 masters, 30 finalists are selected by our judges for an all expenses paid trip to Washington DC to present their research and compete in a series of hands-on team challenges. Finalists will be announced on September 16th and finals week this year will be from October 16th through the 21st. Finalists can win a variety of prizes such as iPads, funds to STEM summer camps and grand awards ranging from $10,000 to our top prize, the Samueli Foundation Prize of $25,000. But the biggest prize is making new friends and building a network for fellow science enthusiasts. Broadcom Masters, top 300 entrants and nominees all make us extremely proud through their creative, through your creativity, ambition, and eagerness to change the world through STEM. So now Aaron and I are gonna look through the chat and pick out some of your questions to answer. So just give us um, a few minutes. All 
Um, so a question that I see here is, what if the can, so if the contest is only for middle school students, what happens if you have your, if you do your project and compete when you're in eighth grade? But since the contest is in October, um, you'll be in ninth grade. So that is absolutely fine as long as you um, are registered for a science fair in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade, and that is the project that you are submitting through the application. Um, we understand that uh, in the fall, eighth graders will now be in ninth grade. Um, but that is totally, totally allowed. Um, one question that we have is, what are the judges specifically looking for in essay questions? Um, basically in the essay questions, the judges just wanna hear more about how you think. Um, they wanna see your creativity and your unique answers to problems. Um, so oftentimes your first, uh, the first thing you think about as a response is probably your best bet to go with. Um, so just be creative and um, answer the best you can. So another question that um, we've gotten is, uh, can the judges see how much time you spent on the application? And the answer is no. No one can see how long you've uh, taken to work on the application, just make sure that you submit it before the deadline on June 10th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, here we have a question about uh, altering or changing your project. Um, so uh, the question is, I lost it. Uh, essentially, the, the question was, even though I can't find it anymore, was um, whether or not you can continue to work on your project. Um, so the answer to that question is that you can continue. You you are allowed to continue the same trials of your project, so that you're just gathering more data and you're allowed to present that data but you can't change any of the variables of your project that would alter the intent of the project. And I wanna follow up on um, Aaron's response. Um, if you have a, a project that, you know, you, you weren't able to finish this year because your schools are closed and you can't get into your labs, um, just email us at masters at societyforscience.org um, with your specific case and we'll um, walk you through it and we'll answer your questions. We just wanna make sure that everyone is still being safe and following the rules that um, were required by your fair to initially compete. Um, someone asked, and I've gotten a few emails about this recently, if there's an extra process in order to qualify for the top 300 or the 30, and the answer is no, everyone is purely based on the application that you submit through Fluid Review at broadcommasters.fluidreview.com. Um, so if you are selected for the top 300, or if you become a finalist, there's no additional processes that you need to complete. Another question that we got is, is there a way that we can upload pictures of our project? So yes, um, in the visual aid section of the application, that's where you wanna include any visuals about your project, whether it's graphs, charts, figures that you use to analyze your data. Um, if you built something or have some kind of prop that you wanna show us, that's a great place to include it. Um, that is not a place for you to include extra text uh, to, to any of your essay or project question responses. Um, and we also don't wanna see uh, the judges don't want to see um, just a picture of your science fair board. Um, the judges aren't going to be able to zoom in on this. Think of it as a standard eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. Um, and so you want to make sure whatever visuals you include are going are clear um, on that size paper. Um, someone asked if the selection is based on the time of submission. And the answer is no, as long as you get your project in before June 10th at 8 p.m. Um, when you submit is totally up to you. Um, 
You are able to go back and continue working on your application after you submit if you wanna just make sure that you get it in before the deadline, um, so you feel comfortable, have lots of time. Um, but if you submit at 7.59, you are still considered um, just as much as the person who submitted today or last week. And we definitely encourage everyone to get in the application sooner rather than later and go ahead and submit because you have nothing to lose. But if for whatever reason you don't end up opening your application until June 10th, plenty of people still open applications and submit it on that day. So you, it is possible, um, but there's no harm in doing it early either. So hopefully, hopefully you get in there um, today. So there have been a few questions on um, how exactly team uh, applications work. So if you completed a project as a team, each member of the team needs to submit their own application and it needs to be in their own words. So obviously we know that your answers about your projects will be very similar, but we do wanna hear, um, hear the way that you formulate those words on your own. Um, and then selection is based on, um, on the, the student as a whole. So there is a possibility that one student would make it to become a top 300 and one student would not. Um, but we really do try to take the whole student into consideration. Um, and a question about uh, if teams make it to finals week, if they can present together or not, um, you are allowed to have the same, same project board. There was a question about um, the status of finals week considering the COVID-19 situation. As of now, we're still planning to have it, um, but we will keep everyone updated if there are any changes um, that we need to make. Another person asked about um, the packet that I mentioned um, that you should have gotten from your fair director. Uh, it basically just has information on how to apply and all of the information that Aaron and I just went through today. If you didn't get a packet, either a physical packet or a digital packet, um, contact your fair director. They're the ones that should be giving that to you. Um, but you can also always email us um, and we can help, give, uh, help, help you get that. There's another question here about um, once you submit the application, can you go back and edit it? Yes. Once you submit, you still have the opportunity to make changes. Just make sure you save each part of the application um, and then go ahead and download a copy of your application so that you can make sure any changes that you made were saved and submitted. Um, so there are a couple questions about the visual aid. Um, the first one asks, um, if in a photo, you can include things like your hands or your face. Um, so you can include your hands, but you can't include your face or any other identifying information in a photograph. So your hands are fine, um, but nothing of your face. And then there are a few questions about using videos in the visual aid. Um, and the answer is no, that we will not accept videos in the visual aid. It's only pictures, graph, charts, things of that nature. Um, and it is not necessary to make any sort of video to present your project. Um, there's a question about if someone would have to pay for the trip to Washington DC. Um, the answer is no, if you are a finalist, all expenses are covered um, for you and one adult. Um, there are some questions about science fair paperwork. Um, if you have specific questions to your project and the approvals that you may or may not have gotten, send us an email at masters at societyforscience.org um, detailing your question and we'll help you out. Each fair has different forms that they require. Um, so we'll take that, those questions on a case by case basis. Oh my goodness. If you have a question, um, please do not continue to repost it. It's 
making it very difficult to, to scroll through and see all of the questions. Um, someone asked, as a design project, are you allowed to continue making new prototypes and making the prototype better? As long as the intent of the project does not change, as long as your prototype is still trying to do the same thing, you can make little tweaks. One person has asked if the nominees um, have an advantage over non-nominees. So again, since we changed um, the eligibility rules kind of halfway through the science fair year, um, some of you might have been um, nominated by your science fairs and others um, may not have had the chance to compete at their local science fairs, um, but are now eligible to, to compete or, and to enter Broadcom Masters. Um, there is no advantage to being nominated. Everyone gets to submit an application. And everyone will be on the same um, level playing field once you submit. Um, I again want to reiterate that uh, using your poster board or a photo of your poster board as your visual aid, like Reva said, um, is not the best idea. Um, it's it would be much too small for the judges to try to read. They can't really um, see it as well on, a, on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So we really recommend instead choosing a few graphs or charts from your board that you used on there um, to show to the judges instead. Okay, we'll take one or two more questions. Just to reiterate something that Aaron already mentioned, um, but we have a question about the transition from the top 300 to the top 30. Um, you do not have to do anything else um, once you've submitted your application. Uh, we have a team of uh, judges that go in after evaluators read your applications and they um, choose the top 30 finalists. So there's no uh, other requirements that you have to fill um, to go from the top 300 to top 30. Okay, if you have um, specific questions about your project or um, things that we did not answer here, please email us at masters at societyforscience.org and we will answer your question there. We've put up the email um, on the screen right now, so go ahead and take note of that. Um, and we'll also be um, posting a copy of this recording um, of the webinar uh, on our YouTube page in the next few days. So you can always go back here and reference um, any of the answers we had to your questions. Um, but I think that's, uh, we're gonna call it for now. Um, so again, congratulations on starting your applications. If you haven't started already, hopefully this webinar um, eased your worries a little bit and you get in there. Um, and yeah, email us at masters at societyforscience.org if you have any questions and good luck as you continue to work on your application. Bye everyone. Bye.